Uh, hello everyone and welcome to a busy day in our household. Uh, today I'm going to share with you an Americanized recipe. If the original recipe was Hungarian, we're going to make some goulash today, but it has been um, changed up significantly to um, make it faster and um, just to take all the cook time out of it. So there's a lot of things that have changed in the recipe. They don't use cubed beef in the American recipe. They used chipped beef or hamburger instead and um, the cook time is definitely significantly less. So this makes this a quick recipe that you can put on for your family, whether that's a little one or a big one, um, within a very short amount of time. Join me back here after this and we will get this recipe on the go. So to get started with this recipe, I'm going to start off with just a little better than a half pound of hamburger. Um, this is what hamburger costs where I live, folks. That's not a pretty sight for sure, and um, but it's what we're dealing with. This hamburger is lean, and I am just going to throw it into the frying pan and start to break it up while I work on some veggies to go in there as well. Before I get to work on the veggies though, I want to share something. I got this sweet card from one of my viewers. Her name is Darlene and I appreciate it so much, Darlene. Thank you for, for sending me this little bright ray of sunshine. I, um, it made me smile when I opened it. And to answer your question, yes, your emojis do the trick. So thank you very much. Anyway, on with the recipe. I am, I have got here about a medium to medium small onion and I'm not going to treat it like it's too precious but I am going to get the skin off and I'm going to dice it up um, because this and actually I might look for another onion too because this one isn't very big now that I've got all of its bark off. So I am just going to continue to dice this onion and tell you how excited we are. This is one of those recipes that's more like um, comfort food I guess because it uh, can be quite um, budget friendly and because we use ground beef in it and we also use canned tomatoes instead of fresh and those you know those little tricks always make a difference actually I think I have enough onion so this probably is a cup and a half of onion um, for sure it's a cup of onion and I'm going to dump that in with the hamburger and then get started on I'm cutting up a bell pepper and two cloves of garlic. So let's get this in the pot. And I'm just going to go to work on this bell pepper and take the seeds out of it. It doesn't matter what color the bell pepper is. Uh, most of the peppers today uh, have the same sort of sweet flavor. The green pepper is of course not quite so much but um, I didn't have any green peppers and decided not to make the journey to the store for a green pepper when I had four colored peppers right here at home. So I'm going to use up what I happen to have on hand. The idea for a busy day is that we find something in our cupboards that we can turn into a meal without having to leave the house. So that's what I'm doing right now is trying to make a meal without leaving the house. So I think this one will be a good hearty dinner for us. Uh, my husband texted me just a while ago and asked me what I was making for dinner. And when I told him goulash, he was pretty excited about it. So you know that it's uh, a good recipe when they look forward to a hamburger dish for sure. So. 
here where I live, we have almost no snow left on the mountain, which is a very uncommon thing in our area. The snow is generally uh, still here in the middle of July. We see snow on the mountaintops and the snow is almost all gone, which is not a good sign for this time of the year. It means probably that people in our area will have problems with um, water. They may, may um, have dry wells around us. <clears throat> we live right in town and the town wells are nice and deep and we are on water rations already. So we have to be careful about the water, that our water usage, but we don't mind doing that. It's all part of a community, things that you have to do. Now, I've minced up those two onions, or sorry, those two garlic cloves, and I've diced up the pepper, and I'm going to throw these into the pot, and then I'll get started on the next party. Now, I'm just going to get started uh, opening up these cans. I have a 14 ounce can of no salt added tomato sauce. And I have two cans of diced tomatoes. And these diced tomatoes happen to be the roasted pepper ones, the fire roasted pepper. And, but use whatever you happen to have on hand. You can even use whole tomatoes in this. I'm just going to put everything into a bowl and then I'll take it and dump it into the pot. And, but use whatever you have on hand. It, it really doesn't matter. If you find that the chunks of tomato are too big, then by all means, once it's cooking in the pot, uh, grab a potato masher and run a potato masher through it to break up any big chunks. But I find that usually these fire roasted ones aren't, um, don't have really big chunks in them anyway. And they do smell good. It's amazing what they're doing with tomatoes these days. It's also amazing that tomatoes are used in, as far as I know, almost every culture in the world. So that's kind of cool. I can hear the pan getting really hot, so I'm going to go turn it down a little bit. And then I'll come back and we'll get the um, spices into, into this and then get it all in the pot to go. Now, it doesn't even require a lot of things in it. I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of seasoned salt because I'm watching the salt in this. And I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of paprika. This is smoked paprika which just adds a, you know, more depth of flavor to it. should also say that this recipe actually is good for two people. You can easily adapt this by just doubling the recipe to make it good for a crowd or tripling it or however much you need. I'm going to put in one and a half teaspoons, close to a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. I'm going to add a couple of, I've got two broken pieces of bay leaf in here. I'm going to add those in there as well. I'm going to add one tablespoon of soy sauce. Now this is the ingredient that might be a little controversial because some people use Worcestershire sauce and some people use soy sauce. So whatever you're used to. Um, but that's the reason that I'm watching the salt is because I know I have quite a bit in here already. And last but not least into this uh, sauce bowl, I am going to add two cups of beef stock. And honestly, down the road, if it, once it starts to um, come up to a boil, I am going to watch in it. And if it doesn't look like there's enough moisture in there to, cut, to, to cook my macaroni, then I will add more beef stock, but um, normally that does it, that's enough. So I'm just going to give this a quick stir up, and this is going to go into the pot. And then I'll take you over to the stove, and I will show you what it looks like when it's come to a simmer. 
So this is what it looks like as it's come to a gentle simmer. I don't know, I guess maybe, oh yeah, you should be able to see it bubbling in the pot. And I'm satisfied that it's got enough moisture in it at the moment, that it's saucy enough. And I'm going to let it cook like this uh, for about 10 more minutes. It's been simmering now for 10 minutes and I'm going to let it go about another 10 minutes. And then I'm going to add the macaroni to the pot. So just a few more minutes and I will add the macaroni. I'm going to add a cup and a half of just, um, can I get this far enough away? Just cut elbow macaroni. And um, this works just fine. And it's something that um, kids and adults alike seem to enjoy this dish. So what can you say? This makes it a perfect weeknight meal, in my opinion. And um, I will be back with you soon. Here we are. I've just tested the macaroni and it's cooked. And you can see that a lot of the uh, sauce has evaporated. Well, it's actually... Um, the macaroni has used up the sauce in order to rehydrate itself and I'm just shut the stove off. I am going to bring this over to the counter and serve some out so you can see what it looks like and I hope that you would consider making this for your family. Let's go back to the counter. Well I'm just taking it off the stove. It's, it's piping hot yet and it really thickened up. So I'm just going to uh, serve out a bit here so that you can see what it looks like. Now, at this point, you could definitely add some cheese to it if, if you chose that. And uh, my husband always adds some of that powdered uh, Parmesan cheese to it. And once in a while, I do like to add a little cheddar cheese to it. I have made a bit of a mess here, but um, this is a really good dish. Simple, simple ingredients. Uh, I, I love it. Now, just before we go today, before I finish this, this meal off, I wanted to tell you that I looked up Hungary on uh, Google, and because honestly, I don't know very much about it as a country. And I thought if I'm going to make a dish that even poorly mimics um, their Hungarian goulash, I should at least know a little bit about the country that it's coming from because I love many different cultural foods. I, um, right here, Hungary is a landlocked country in Central Europe with a capital called Budapest. It's dissected by the Danube River, which I thought was super interesting. I'm not sure where I thought the Danube was. Obviously, I'm not really good with my geography. It has a population of 9.71 million people. So it's, you know, compared to Canada, um, that's a lot of people. And yeah, look it up, folks. It, it's wealth is in its thermal and mineral water sources, and it's called the land of waters and the thermal lakes and baths attract thousands of visitors to the country throughout the whole year. So anyway, I found that really interesting. This is a, a wonderful dish. I hope that you'll consider uh, giving it a try. I hope too that um, if you like this video or any of my videos that you'll please give them a thumbs up. If you do that, that really helps me out. Um, I love to read your comments or um, get your wonderful messages like I did from Darlene with the cute little card. Thank you so much again for that. And um, I feel like we're getting to know each other and I'm really happy about that. So folks, until the next video, please take care and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.